In this video lesson, we're going to look at complex Boolean expressions. These are also called compound Boolean expressions, depending on the resource you look at. And they are using logical operators to define and evaluate the complex Boolean values. So here's our lesson goals. We want to define what a complex Boolean expression is. We want to identify the role of three of the logical operators that we're going to use in this class. There are others besides these three. These are the most common, and that is the AND logical operator, the OR logical operator, and the NOT logical operator. And then we want to evaluate some complex Boolean expressions as being either true or false. So a complex Boolean expression is one that uses a logical operator. And the first one we see is the AND. So here I have an expression of 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, and 3 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 7. There are two parts to this complex Boolean expression. The first one is the 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And we can evaluate that as true. And then the 3 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 7. We can evaluate that as also being true. And so now we have a true and a true, which together is a true value. If both sides of the AND are true values, the expression evaluates to true. But I might change that expression to 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, and 3 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. And now the one on the left is still true, but the expression on the right, 3 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7, is false. And with the AND, if something is true and false, the whole thing becomes false. This is what we call a truth table. So we can look at expression 1 and expression 2 and determine whether the result should be true or false. It's only true with an AND if both sides are true. If one or the other is false, the expression evaluates to false, as we just saw. And if they're both false, the expression evaluates to false. Well, let's look at another logical operator, and that's the OR. And I've taken that same statement we just had previously. If 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, if I change the AND to an OR, and so now we have 3 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. As we just saw, we have a true on the left and a false on the right. But the OR changes the evaluation. Here it's true if one or the other side is true. Whereas with the AND, both left and right had to be true. Our truth table for the OR then looks like this. If both sides are true, the result is true. If either side is true, the result is true. But if both sides of that OR logical operator are false, it evaluates to false. Now there's one more, and that is the NOT operator. And the NOT operator reverses the truthfulness of a Boolean value. So here I have NOT 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And that becomes NOT true. And of course, if something's not true, it is false. So it changes a true to a false or a false to a true. Here then is that truth table. You can see it just results in a reversal of the expression we can have complex Boolean expressions that have more than two Boolean values or Boolean expressions. So here I have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and 3 plus 4 is equal to 6 or 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And we would evaluate these from the left to the right. So what we have is a true and false or true. And we'd evaluate the true and false together first and we would get a false value. So now we have false or true, but false or true with the or, if one side is true, the result is true. And so that is a true expression. Now I can change the order in which that is evaluated. In a lot of cases, it doesn't make a lot of difference. So here's the same expression, but I added parentheses around the last two. And so we still have true and false or true, but the false or true is going to be evaluated first. And in this case, that is a true expression because we have true and true. Let's look at another one. Here we have 1 plus 1 is equal to 5, or 3 plus 4 is equal to 6, and 5 times 2 is equal to 10. So here, the 1 plus 1 is equal to 5 is false, and 3 plus 4 is 
equal to 6 is, of course, false. And the 5 times 2 is equal to 10 is true. So we have a false or false and true. It's going to evaluate the, side, the first two first together with the or. So false or false is false. And then false and true evaluates to false. Let's take a look at this in use in a Python program. So we're going to ask the user two questions. Do you have a dog? Yes or no. And do you have a cat? Yes or no. We're asking them to enter a Y or an N. So if dog.upper, we're going to take what they entered. If it's a lowercase n or a lowercase y, we'll convert it to an uppercase y and an uppercase n. So if dog.upper converts a dog to an uppercase is equal to an uppercase y and cat.upper is equal to an uppercase y, meaning they have both a dog and a cat. We're going to print, we love multiple pet owners at South Mountain Pets. Else if, so we have an elif, dog.upper equals y, or cat.upper is equal to y. Then we're going to print, mention serenity, and receive 15% off at South Mountain Pets. Let me just stretch this out a little bit so you can see the, the end of that statement. And then an else, meaning they're both no's, print, we have wonderful pets for adoption at South Mountain Pets. Well, let's run this, and we'll see what we get. So, do you have a cat or dog? I'm going to do the first one of yes, the cat, yes, and I press the enter key, and I'm told we love multiple pet owners at South Mountain Pets. So, this first one here is what printed, okay? This was, a, this was true, and that was true. So the whole thing was true, and it executed the, that fork. Let me run this again. This time we'll say yes and no. So now this is true, but this is false, but it's an or. One side or the other, as long as it's true, will execute this fork, which is Mention Serenity and receive 15% off at South Mountain Pets. Let me run this again. This time I'll reverse those. So I'm going to say no dog, but yes, I have a cat. And I get the same thing because one or the other is still true. And if I run it one more time and I say no to both, then I'll get the else fork executing, which is we have wonderful pets for adoption at South Mountain Pets. So that's a, a simple example of how you might use a complex Boolean expression in an if, elif, else structure. Let me show you another example. So here I'm going to print that someone has stolen the sorting hat at Hogwarts. So the faculty decided to place everyone in a dormitory by gender and year in school. Here's what they decided. Gryffindor will house females years one and two. Hufflepuff, females years three and four. Ravensclaw dorm will contain males years one and two, and Slytherin contains males years three and four. This program will ask the student for their name, gender, and year in school, and display which dormitory they should move into. And then have a new line character to give us a blank line. So we're going to ask them to enter their name. That's going to go into a variable called student, and that's a string variable, because what we enter into an input is always string. Then we're going to take the gender variable, also a string variable, and have them answer either M or F whether they are male or female, and we'll use that dot upper method. So this produces a string, and then the dot upper takes that string value and makes it uppercase. So if they put in a lowercase m or a lowercase f, it'll become uppercase m or uppercase f. And then we're going to ask them the year, and they're going to enter their year in school, one, two, three, or four. Now remember, that's a string value when we use the input, but we're going to cast that using int method so that all occurs inside the parentheses for int that cast it into an integer. And so we're going to assign that to year. And year then is an integer variable. So here then is our if, elif, else structure, which we're going to use complex Boolean expressions. So if gender is equal to f and year is less than 3, meaning they put in a 1 or a 2, we're going to set the dorm to Gryffindor. If, however, Else if gender is equal to F and the year is greater than 2, so they put in a 3 or a 4, we're going to set the dorm equal to Hufflepuff. Else if gender is equal to male and year is less than 3, we'll set the dorm to Ravensclaw. And then another elif, gender is equal to M for male and year is greater than 2, we'll set the dorm to Slytherin. 
and L, something went wrong. They put in some wrong data. So we're going to expel them and say the dorm is your own home. You've been expelled. And then we're going to print. Using our placeholders of 0 and 1, you'll be re residing in. Then we're going to use the dot .format method to place student into 0. That's their name. And the dorm they're going to reside in into 1. So let's run this. So we've printed out the information to them. We asked them their name. So let's just type in Harry, mail, M, year, let's put Harry in year one. So Harry is in Ravensclaw. That was this fork, mail, and the year is less than three. Let's run this again. This time we'll put in Sally. Sally is a female. Sally is year one. I should make her year two. Sally's year two. Sally, you'll be residing in Gryffindor. So female, less year less than three, and executed that fork. And of course, ignores everything after that. Let's run it again. I'm going to type in Jane. Female. Jane is year four. Jane will be residing in Hufflepuff. So here, gender female. Year is greater than three. We have an and, they're both true. And we get dorm Hufflepuff. I'm going to run this one more time. This time we'll say Pete. Pete's a male. Pete is year three. Pete will be, riding, will be residing in Slytherin. So here we have gender male and the year is greater than two. One last time, let's make a mistake here. I'll put in Stephen for the name. But for male or female, I'm going to put in a Z. And my year in school is going to be four, but I'm told I'll be residing in my own home because I've been expelled. I didn't follow directions. So we've hit all five of those forks and made sure they all work.